Can I borrow a match? Oh, I use a lighter. It's better still. Until they go wrong. Welcome to Istanbul, Mr. Bond. Your transportation is here, sir. James, my friend. How nice to see you. Karen Bay. It's been too long. Interesting car. Limited edition? Your man Q sent it ahead. Warned me not to touch any of the buttons. You were wise to take his advice. Otherwise, you might not live to regret it. Come. They're waiting for us at Station T. I'll drive. I suppose it's customary to have people tailing you in these parts. It's only the Russians. They follow us, we follow them. It's sort of an understanding we have. That's very friendly. So, let's talk about this business of yours. Em thinks I'm wasting my time here. And so do I. But if there's a chance of getting the lecture, it's worth the risk. Okay, they're done talking. Hi, it's Chase 4 We're here with uh, From Russia With Love. As you can see, we're driving a car. Uh, the driving in this is different from the other James Bonds, as you're using A to drive rather than R. And truth be told, sometimes, in this case, it's usually better to just tap it every now and again and look not at where you're driving, but at the map at the top right. that your truce with the Russians has just ended. But I didn't order an attack. Then who did? I don't know. But the Russians are going to blame us. You'd best get us out of here. Shit. <laughs> R is how you shoot. And you also have tires. They pop tires. It's super great. I love it. So they really, you know, upped the driving a bit. But you see that purple dot up there? It's best to just, like, try and find the path that leads to it and you know glance at the map as much as possible so I'm probably going to be driving really terribly because I'm not looking at the road but uh, at the map so I think I've said this in a nightfire but when it comes to driving it's better to just like hold down shoot and then just tap drive so this way you're not crashing into things obsessively but these uh, fancy tire spikes are super super fucking useful because if anyone ever gets next to you, you can just flip them over, and I will try and demonstrate, but I will not succeed. Assuming they don't destroy this car first. If we need repairs, there's a mechanic in town that will gladly aid us. He owes me many favors. And they're gonna make us go see him. Uh, I think it's the red dot. Um, the other difference with this is, all right, aside from hitting everything that exists, James. This one doesn't have things like a uh, smokescreen or oil slick or anything like that. It's just quite literally what you see. And you know what? That's fine with me. I don't even mind. Do I go B? I go B. Alright, hold on, hold on. There's too much Russia right here and not enough love. <laughs> so most of the time there's only bad guys on the road anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you just hold R. And it auto-aims for you, so that makes it nice and convenient. You don't have to aim your car, because that'd be fucking retarded. Thankfully, no James Bond has ever done that. We need to go left. <laughs> Move! Man, probably dead inside there now. Where is... Was this not the right direction? It was a mechanic to the right, and I had the, er, the purple, and I went to the red. Or no, this is the garage I had to blow up. Well here, let's uh, just shoot at it. Right? Come on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Okay, we did it. This is also a bit of a length level, as it's like a two-parter. Driving is just the first part. You're gonna need to go away, sir. See, I love it! The tire spikes are so useful! Why can't I have this in real life? Do you have any idea how much better people- Why is he on top of me? How much better people will drive if you threaten them with fucking tire spikes? Like, I promise you, they'll learn to drive much better. 
if you have tire spikes. I remember seeing a gif once of a guy who was trying to cut another guy off and the guy in the back who was going to be cut off pulled a gun out of the window and then the guy who was going to cut him off turned to the side and backed up and I was like if only that were legal because that would be also an effective method of making people learn to drive. And for those of you who don't know because I've been all around the fucking world no one knows how to drive regardless of where you live. So for everyone bitching like, oh, California can't drive, New York can't drive, something like that, it's like that around the world. I promise you, nobody can drive, period. Like, I have road rage just walking. Because I'm like, hey, you see yourself existing, you should really consider not existing because you're fucking with my ability to cross the street, you piece of shit. And yes, that's, that's a true statement. <laughs> I'm that rude. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day where someone learns to read my lips, and they pull over and they're like, excuse me? And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> where go to this way? We're almost there. Yep, I certainly blew that place up, didn't I? I need to go this way now. Uh, excuse me, that gate was not open before, but it is now. We're almost there, James. Alright, <laughs> driving is great. Trust me. See that turn radius right there? It's absolutely great. All of my experience playing Mario Kart and Cruising has truly paid off. Something tells me they're serious about this, James. Is there another way to the station? No. We have to get past the tank. Can you do it? It's difficult, but not insurmountable. Wait here. Also, a bit of a... I, not really fun, but a story for you, is when I got this game at the time, you know, it was kind of a big deal. But uh, I got a chair that same Christmas that, you know, you could plug your video games into and hear it like that. And it was super cool, and everyone loved it. Nowadays, I think it's kind of common. Those chairs are pretty much broken now. They don't really work, and it doesn't help that the cables to hook it up um, aren't in my possession. But the biggest drawback to those chairs were the fact that voice-acted cutscenes weren't audible. So if you were to ever play a game with it, you'd have to play something like Banjo-Kazooie or some shit where, you know, there's no spoken dialogue that matters. Because you couldn't play this game and enjoy it. Um, this was also... This right here, this level was probably the first one I was ever really stuck at. Not because it was seriously hard or anything, but because I was fucking daft and there's tanks around, so there's, you know, a good chance they will end your life. So I, th I was stuck because I didn't really understand it, and eventually one day it just kind of clicked, and I think I beat it in what I consider an accident, but later I realized and now it's, you know, not hard at all. But yeah, I did have difficulties with this level before, like, a long, long time ago. Hey, don't push me, you fucker. I'll punch you in the face and knee you in the stomach and flip you and shit. Maybe it's because I've never been in a situation like that, but I can't help but wonder if something like that will actually make an enemy stay down, or if they would just get back up, because I feel like they would probably get back up in return to shooting you. But I don't know, I've never been in that situation. Nor is it really something I'd like to be into. Alright, 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 you see, you see, you, you're getting punched and then elbowed. I mean, I know it knocks the wind out of you to get hit in the stomach. Like, that's one thing I'm not a fan of. Having the wind knocked out of me is on the bottom of, on the bottom of the list of my favorite things to do. Right here. Now we got a shotgun! And we have a shotgun forever! This is also, in my opinion, like, the only memorable shotgun in James Bond history <laughs> because the shotguns in the other games just usually haven't been too good and it's also mostly useful against this guy who also has a shotgun but see I like that shotgun better because this one better because when it comes to reloading it doesn't take fucking forever like I think the world's not enough you had to reload one bullet at a time 
but you had the ability to switch it from pump to auto. So, you know, you could have an auto fire shotgun, waste all eight rounds, and then just never use it again. Um, I believe, I think Nightfire had the same feature, but it was just still not really my favorite thing to use. Also, special ammo for the shotgun is amazing. The shotgun's also something you don't typically find ammo for in general that often, so I would say usually hold on to the shotgun ammo for something important, because it's kind of rare. Like, despite the fact that they give you these guns and shit, that doesn't mean you're going to find ammo for it all the time. The SMG and the PP7 are probably going to be the ammos you find the most of, which I'm about to switch to now. Excuse me, who said you could make blow-ups? Because I don't recall giving you permission, sir. That's a really, really blue sky. Like, there's no clouds or anything, it's just solid blue. Your bond move is right here. Do not shoot this guy. Instead, just instantly grapple, and you will take him out like that. Probably the easiest bond move to do, because you don't even have to think, you just do it. Alright, you see this aim thing we got going on? We need to work on it. Sir? I understand, I'm afraid of guns too. And by afraid of guns, I mean I'm not. That was just the only thing I could think of that might have been funny, even though it really wasn't. I don't think there... Ooh, what's this? Attach a case. Uh, damn, I really want to do that. I feel like there were schematics I've missed. But I don't know. There had to have been schematics I've missed, because this is... Well, this is it. Fuck you, I'm doing the attache case. Also, just because I didn't say it, the attache cases are timed, so if you aren't quick enough, you don't get it. Now, here's the part they always died at, because I didn't think about it, but yeah, you shoot tanks, and that's it. That's how you win. Outstanding, double seven. A bit over the top, but well done. Now, on to Station 10. So I believe I was actually pretty stupid and I looked past the tank and I was looking for something I was supposed to be doing other than that and that was why I kept dying. That and I'm pretty sure I had very little health left but obviously I've gotten better over the years. I also don't think I've said it but I believe this was the last James Bond game EA did which is also why I consider it the very last good James Bond game. I think the next one after this was Quantum of Solace which I don't really like. Like, I don't understand it, but for some reason, there's a lot of Wii games that just look uglier than GameCube games. Like, this game looks prettier than Quantum of Solace does. And I don't quite under- there was schematics. And I don't quite understand why. But it's uglier. I have points for armor. <laughs> I wanna go get the one at the bottom. I can do that, okay? That works. Yeah, when you get uh, these other two, it'll pretty much make your... Because I don't know if I made it that obvious or apparent. That little bar at the bottom, it just grows longer. So when I get these other two, my health bar and body armor bar will be the same length. I think right now it's probably about half the length. Which, you know, isn't bad. And then later we'll get into uh, upgrading our guns and shit. But uh, I believe that's it for this part. So next time I see you guys, we will do Station T.